The first time I ever got a bad data comment was somebody calling me a whale, someone calling me an um, <laughs> elephant. And a lot of it, they are like, oh, do you have high cholesterol? Oh, um, have you thought about losing weight? And I'm just like, why? What? Like, yeah. like, firstly, why is this the first thought you have when I'm just literally on a video just saying that, hey, I feel good. Hello. Hi. Style. Thank it's you. So nice. I was a bit worried about your modern stuff, right? So I was like, wow, crap, what I wear. <laughs> oh, why are you stressed? Look at how you are, look at how I'm dressed. I'm just I mean, like basic girl. Okay? I mean, you still look good. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. Like, how did you get into modeling in the first place? I'm also a makeup artist. Okay. So I started connecting with all the people in the fashion industry and mm. told them, hey, I model too. So then, after they start hiring me to become a model for their brand and okay. also do the makeup. So I know, like, as plus size people, like, it's very hard to find clothes already. So, how do you actually engage brands who are open to plus size models? I mean, as a plus size model, you can't expect much opportunities here. It is actually the one reason that I am not doing this as a full time job. It's purely because there's, very, there's such a small community of people who actually want to be inclusive in their. Brand. So I realise if there's a shop for plus size clothing, mm. it's always very anti, you know. It's so, so ugly. I don't want to wear it. Yeah, <laughs> why is it always like covering up the oh, body? Yeah, yeah. It's always, yeah. It's always, always covering up the, the body. The long sleeve and then a bit flary. Recently I went to a casting, it's a luxury brand. Whoa. And I did not know it, but I went there and I felt so out of place. I look like a short, <laughs> stubby girl. <laughs> and this model was so like, and I'm just saying hi. <laughs> Do they give you like looks? Do they judge you? Because like, yes, people don't look at you when you talk to you. And this has happened to me whenever I do like big shows and I'm there or if I'm going for a big casting, it's always the same thing. How do you feel though when like, let's say, like, you get the job and they don't, you know? Huh. Does it give you like a little bit of an ego boost? <laughs> Totally. <laughs> I mean, when it happens, yes, totally. I mean, I've gone to commercials where I was casted and I got in and I was just like, oh my god, like, it's amazing. <laughs> it reassures me that I got recognised by fashion directors from doing runways. I can do it. I can do it. It's just a matter of going to the right crowd. Do you ever get any hate comments or like people fat shaming you? The first time I ever got a bad data comment was somebody calling me a whale. Someone calling me um, <laughs> elephant. And a lot of it, they are like, oh, do you have high cholesterol? Oh, um, have you thought about losing weight? And I'm just like, why? What? Like, yeah. like, firstly, why is this the first thought you have when I'm just literally on a video just saying that, hey, I feel good. Yeah. Can't a plus size person feel good? Yeah. Can't a fat person feel good? I think because, like, for me, because I'm like plus size also, so I actually don't know how you can, like, tolerate that? I think the important factor is to realise that these are just people's insecurities that they're putting out and so yeah I just don't really care too much about it. Do both of you think like having plus size models on screen promote obesity? <sighs> okay um no no it does not but I think like even like studies have shown like if you are obese you tend to pose like greater health risk, right? Mm -hmm. But I feel like um, like plus size people modelling for a brand is actually just including like a certain body type. Totally. I 100% agree with you. When I first saw a plus size person on cam, on a, on a TV, mm -hmm. I never felt more included in my life. I was like, oh my god, mm -hmm. she looks like me. Yeah. And it didn't make me want to like be in that lifestyle. I mean, it didn't make me want to be like, oh, I want to stay this size forever. Mm -hmm. But yeah. what, like seeing someone like me on, on the media, mm -hmm. being represented, mm -hmm. gives me so much more freedom because I get to finally be like myself mm -hmm. and we don't feel like, you know, mm -hmm. an outcast all the yeah. time. We don't put ourselves lower than others. Yes, yeah. like our worth is not any less just because we're big. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so we were talking about my style. So how about you? What's like? What exactly is your style? How did you go about it? I am ashamed to say this, but as much as I am in this fashion industry, I have the most basic style. I'm a crop top girl, actually. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. 
really? I love crop tops. Oh, it's the it's the oh, one okay. thing that most people will see me wear all the oh, time. Okay, okay. I think yeah. because for me, I'm a bit insecure with my waist area, so I don't usually wear crop tops. I'm more concerned with like getting stares on the MRT. I feel very uncomfortable. Yeah, I feel yeah. I feel you about that. Like I did try like a lot. Like mm. I think because I'm plus size, I've never really had a lot of good options. Oh. In the beginning, I was yeah, yeah, yeah. always wearing like clothes that covered my body mm. and like took away the shape that I, I see, had. I see, and yeah. it did demotivate me a lot because I realized that I could see like like my yeah, yeah, my waist yeah. is like purging out or like my hips are like just it just does not fit right. Mm. And and I, when I couldn't find my range, I did go through like a heavy eating disorder mm. and it was mm. and it was just like trying to find like ways to just lose weight as much as I could, mm. which means like starving most of the day just to get like to get fit to, into that yeah, yeah. size. So if you're comfortable with sharing, uh, can you tell us more about your eating disorders, if you still have it or you know, back then, anything? So I am definitely still recovering from my eating disorders. Mm -hmm. um, well, thankfully, that's good. It's been nine years of nine? yeah. So ever since I was fifteen, 15? I've actually oh been have going through it. How has that been? Like I get that. Like, do you go back into relapse and stuff? I did relapse a lot. It became like a thing where I would do like for like like one month, and then like a couple months later, it would be like back again. So I became very comfortable with the feeling of being like, like hungry. hungry all the time. So it became like a comfort thing. And I remember there was one day where I just stopped and ate one Mentos. Like like just, not not the no, thing, right? Just, just one. one. <laughs> it's like okay. it was so bad. I felt so hungry throughout the whole day. But I was the skinniest I could ever be in my life. But I I still felt gigantic then. Like mm. the thing is people still tell, told me I was like fat. So I would say that all the fat shaming did push me and did force me to go into this eating disorder. Mm. Definitely. It always started with people telling me, if you're smaller, mm. you look so much better. Just lose 10 more kg. Just lose 10 more kg and you're going to look better. Mm. Were there any people you were close to who actually commented about your body or fat shame you? Well, ever since I was a kid, I was in school. As much as I was shamed in school, at home, I came back home, I had to, I had to like hide myself, you know. I was doing a lot of terrible things to my body because my mom would say things about how like I look like a guy because mm, I'm fat. Mm. And, and then she'll try to dress you up like a guy. Yes. Too. Yes. Did you oh, go to that? Pants. Yeah, I oh hated it, bro. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Do you ever feel like um you know how people paint that picture where if you have an eating disorder you have to be really skinny and everything? Totally. I think um, I, it, it did happen to me a couple of times where I did share to, at the beginning I did share that I had an eating disorder with a family member and it was disregarded. And so um, it became a thing where I just stopped sharing because it just, if, you, if you don't believe what I'm saying, I, I, can't, I can't help it. And that's what the reason why I ended up not having a support system because I hate from that Aww. reason. So like I have anorexia, depression and other stuff. And um, my journey is also a bit up and down. I feel like everybody who has anorexia is always an up and down mountain. Oh my god, I can imagine your journey. So when you were going through um, the relapses, was there anyone beside you? I'm very, very thankful for my friends. Yeah, like people who have like any form of mental illness, they need such a strong support system, you know? Yes. Yeah, because if they fall, then who's going to pick them up? Like they can't pick themselves up. Yeah, so I have a great support system. My friends are always there motivating me. Like, eat a bit lah, it's okay. A bit is okay, that kind of thing, you know? I feel so sad for you though. I oh. wish you had the support system I, that I have. I wish. I really, I truly wish I had that. But I think it's also... I don't think I give anyone the opportunity to become that support system for me. So, yeah. Can, I can be a support system now. Oh, you're <laughs> so sweet. Oh my god, I love this girl. I love this girl. <laughs> I think people are too comfortable with commenting on other people's bodies. That's true. It was That's so true. comfortable. People think that it's okay to talk to just, about. Just like say whatever. Exactly. I think um, people forget that we get stares too, and this yeah. kind of stares are very uncomfortable. Yes. How do you usually react to this kind of stares? Oh because my! I stare back at them. I'm like. Yeah, that's 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 like, like why are you staring at me? I'll stare back at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like yeah. that's exactly what I do. <laughs> Terrible. No, stare back at their eyes next time. Yeah, yeah. I should. I should yes. just stare them. Have you heard of body neutrality before? Mm, I assume it's about 
um, being okay with any body types. Maybe you don't intentionally practice body neutrality, but have you ever catch yourself realizing that, oh my god, I appreciate my body for doing this today? Mm, I actually do that quite often. <laughs> like because I told you I dance, right? I just had a like a dance recital concert yeah. last weekend. Yeah, so actually we had to do like three entire like three shows on the same day. So I was actually super thankful that my body didn't break down. Yeah. And you realize that when you feel like that, you stop thinking about like, oh, like I need to lose weight or feel skinny or look a certain way. Yeah. Maybe I have a bit of intention of losing a bit of weight, but yeah. I don't think it's my main priority. Like yeah. I just want to be like fit and healthy. Yeah. 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 See, that's amazing body too. Body neutrality. Yes. Yes. Body neutrality. <laughs> so yes, Mary, what's next for you? <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. I'm a little bit delusional, I would say. Um, yeah. I would definitely want to... <laughs> delusional? Yeah. Aren't we yeah. all? Exactly. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, so I definitely think that there's so much more I can do with my modeling career. I mean, I may not be the right height. I may not be the ideal, like, typical model. Mm -hmm. but. Till now, I'm still going to push as much as I can. Not just in Singapore, I'll probably leave Singapore and just go out there. Get and your name out there. Yes, mm. I am not the kind that would hide. I will probably go out there and just tell people, I model, so better call me. Yeah. And then I want to see you on more billboards, like overseas yes. and stuff when fingers I travel. Crossed, fingers crossed, fingers yeah. crossed. Like walking around the street, like, oh my god, I know her. I've oh. talked to her before. <laughs> You're so sweet. Thank you so much. I, I really hope that we can get there. Would you like to teach her how to like model? Okay, oh. yeah, oh. that'll be fun. Okay. <laughs> I have a resting bitch face. Do it. Do <laughs> it. <laughs> Do the resting bitch face. Oh, no, I think I'm angry at them, okay. Girl, that is so... Sometimes as a model, right, you do when you do e-commerce mm. shoot, you have to act like you're in motion, so you're just like... <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you can also like... like... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just posing however I feel. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, oh my god. You're so, so nice. nice to meet you. All the so best. Nice. All the best. Oh, <laughs> next two shoots. Thank you. Oh my god. <laughs> so I can a model too. <laughs> hey guys, thanks so much for watching this episode of She Does Meet. And if you'd like to see more, comment down below. Bye. Do you do like facial exercises? Uh, yeah, so I always I do. I would assume you, yeah, yeah. It's very unglam, but I'll be like, oh. Uh, wow, <laughs> wow. Well, like that. I'm a giggly person, I can't even do this.